in a post covid world when everything seems to be uncertain everything seems to be ambiguous if there is someone who comes and says relax you do what you are supposed to do i'll take care of the rest i think it comes like a big relief to anybody so i think today's sales persons today's marketing persons should probably be focusing on apart from energy and enthusiasm which everybody talks about probably to tone it down a little bit and be empathetic uh going exactly against the grain the typical image of a sales person if you were to look at 10 years back read books watch plays see movies and there are so many of these tell me that pen kind of videos and stuff like that where the typical sales guy and the words are scary even pushy pushy sleazy dominating very very garrulous words that look very negative conniving contradiction conflagration con man so instead of con con em empathy empathetic i guess i probably going to matter far more so this is another lesson learned thanks to bad times thanks to good times and bad times so like yes sir agree agreed completely because of uh, the words like as you rightly said pushy salesman or whatever it is the entire profession has actually got a bad name because of that and by that time when you say i am a salesman you are actually looked down saying oh you are only a salesman so the value that i bring to the table nobody notices it because of the sleaziness or because of the chivalrous thing because of lot of negativity which has come to this world with the word sales the sales has lot of sales is only marketing thing that i have found which has more of negativity marketing doesn't have that marketing is considered a very up market job whereas sales is always considered as uh, something which is you don't have anything in this world go and do a sales work you become a sales so sales always had this negative connotation as i keep saying nowadays is you can design a product super you can manufacture it precisely you can price it attractively you can advertise it seductively you can package it sexily but unless you pick up that product with go with your imagination and courage and conviction and sit in front of a customer who finally says wow this looks like changing my life or transforming the way i am going to live my friend you are not telling and that is the difference between staying in your warehouse or adorning the showroom of your customer that's the difference between losses and profits that is the difference between nothing happening and everything happening and that is the difference between having to close down your business and thriving in the business if the pandemic is not an indication of it then what better indication do we have of both the nobility of the profession of sales or the efficacy of it let's look at a very simple example when last year pandemic was recognized and lockdown was imposed the first thought in people's mind was where am i going to get my provisions where am i going to get my vegetables where am i going to get whatever i want to live medicines maybe what was the biggest feeling of relief during those months when the delivery guy from whichever supplier online offline landed up at your doorstep with all the precautions venkatesh we all cheered the medical profession standing on our terraces ringing bells and hitting those thali we cheered and we clapped for the security forces both at the border and in our own cities did anybody stand up and salute a sales person who braved whatever the weather the risk of catching an infection and also being out there delivering packet after packet to doorstep after doorstep that big sense of relief that he was bringing into those families i didn't find anybody cheering 
But I knew that there was thankfulness on every homemaker's trip. Only thing is, I guess it wasn't made vocal. If this isn't the signs of a noble profession, then what is? So, if even under normal circumstances, forget the pandemic. Think of it from this perspective: a senior citizen must sleep well, but he hasn't been able to get his strip of whatever sedative or that medicine that calms him down. Let me take this to another plane. Let's assume for a minute, Venkatesh, that you are selling newspapers and I am selling ceramic tiles. Let us just assume this. For whatever reasons, because of constraint, you are not able to go out. You are not able to sell newspapers. For whatever reasons and constraints, I am not, or I don't want to, or I can't, or I am told not to go out and sell ceramic tiles. So production at both ends stops. If tiles are not going to be sold, they are not going to be manufactured and packed either. If packing isn't taking place, packing boxes are not required. If packing boxes are not required, corrugated sheets are not required. If corrugated sheets are not required, who is going to push that roll of paper to that factory that makes those sheets into boxes? Who is the man who pushes that car? It is a laborer who is paid on daily wages, which means for the next few days. This laborer is not going to be paid because he has no cart to push. Forget the laborer for a minute. Think about his child. Who feeds that laborer's child milk every day? It is a salesperson, Vinkatesh. It's as simple as that. All the armchair advisers, all the great marketing professors, all the great strategists sitting in their ivory towers. will also agree that things happen when a sale takes place and therefore i can't think of a more noble profession i can't think of a better paid profession let me be honest i may have begun my career on the measliest of starting salaries my father even commented when he saw the offer letter and he said is there a typographical error Have they missed out a couple of zeros in the salary column? And I said, "No, this is what it is." He turned around and said, "But you're not even going to get your quota of multivitamin pills." I said, "Dad, who wants multivitamin pills? I'll have a bullet." Now, look at it from this perspective. I don't know how many more zeros have got added to that 200 rupees per month, Venkatesh. But I do know one thing. I do know one thing for sure. But we have all as salespeople added. Hundreds of thousands and millions of zeros to the income of our customers and into their exchequer. So if that is noble, if I take two thousand rupees from you and get you twenty lakhs worth of knowledge or information or talent or protection or safety or growth or collaboration or whatever, because this is what salespeople sell. They don't sell products. They don't sell services. They don't sell apps. what they sell is the most logical conclusion of a feature of a product getting converted into a benefit so you don't sell a bulb you sell an opportunity to win the nobel prize you don't sell champagne you sell celebration you don't sell a ferrari you sell having arrived on page 3 at the end of the day so the sales person makes people realize their dreams this is exactly what i mean by the journey of a sales person I think whatever I could achieve in marketing was because I knew sales, I knew sales people, and I could empathize with sales. Because to a marketing person, their first customer is not the man who buys your product. Your first customer in an organization to a marketing person is the sales person who is going to buy the idea and go and sell the product. If you can't move him. We are all in the business of moving, of influencing, of creating conviction. Everybody sells. A lawyer sells. A doctor sells. A chartered accountant sells. There is no stigma attached to them. The stigma attached to the salesperson as pushy or noisy or garrulous or over talkative or overbearing is something that should slowly disappear. and i guess is the role of people like us 
who've been in the line for a long time to help them break that image, break that myth, shatter the glass ceiling, and come across as your friendly neighborhood salesperson. Agreed, sir. If some, if people like us take it through and make this profession a much more noble one, and may, uh, when we start talking about it as a noblest profession, it becomes much more meaningful for the youngsters also to get into it. Because today, youngsters are lured by basically more of marketing talk. Nobody wants to sell it. Nobody wants to do anything. But yes, they want money. So as you rightly said, getting money, even when I started, it was a small amount. But getting money over a period of time, you get it. Uh, and you earn much more than a marketing guy in sales. Yes, true. As I said, uh, you can decide how much money you want to earn. There are many sales jobs where you receive rewards, you are incentivized. Intelligent salespeople actually sit down and plan very well, very meticulously as to how much money they go to earn. And somewhere along the way, I've been sharing this with friends and colleagues. You have a major conference coming up and you want a new suit? Well, let Mohanlal Maliram make it for you. You ages back, the boss used to tell, you want to take your girlfriend out for dinner at Nero's because it was a restaurant you couldn't afford normally. Then just sell a couple of wing scales to these tea sellers and you will get that dinner. So you're able to tangibly say, this is, Venkatesh, I can't think of a job except a surgeon's job or a lawyer's job where you can measure job satisfaction at the end of the day tangibly. Today was a good day or today was a bad day based on what happened out there in the market. I can't think of any job. So when I move from a sympathy to an empathy state, I become successful in sales. So uh, earlier also, you rightly said, maybe a New York Forbes guy or somebody who used to take so much of heart out to come and talk to you. Yeah, they will try and so so you can actually differentiate between sympathy and empathy when a salesman talks. Okay, and this is something which I have learned over a period of so many years. See, who is actually talking sympathetically and who is actually talking empathetically? Because I have gone through all these things. Very true. So from going and telling a person that, uh, I'm sorry you had this problem, but I want to share this with you. I just need a couple of minutes of yours to tell you how you can overcome this. And believe me, it has worked in my case. And I'm convinced that will not only work in your case, you will actually be feeling delighted. At the end of the day, you are selling trust, you are selling faith, and you are selling that feeling of solace and comfort. So if you are not in the business of empathizing with people and actually owning their issues and obstacles, Probably sales is in the line for such people. But the bad news is, Venkatesh, the world is full of terrible sales guys. But the good news is, anybody can learn to sell. I have been to maternity hospitals. I've looked at the names outside the door, the ward, or the tags on the bed. Baby Sonia, baby Aditya, baby Rohan. I haven't seen a tag which says baby sales person. Salespeople aren't born, they evolve, they become, they make themselves salespeople. And so, there is hope for everybody. Anybody can tell if you are willing to understand. When you told your parents that you wanted to move to a particular city to work, you sold to them. When I told my mother that this was the girl I wanted to marry, I couldn't announce to my mother. I needed to sell it to her. And I even probably needed to tell her that she probably is a descendant of the same Gujarati Baniya family as Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> you know, so the point I'm trying to make is that we all sell at every moment. Why is it that this stigma happens? So, probably as we work along, I don't know, Venkatesh, whether I should share this or not, but I have something called awards. There are many awards lying in my house, but the one award. I want to talk about is an acronym, a terminology, a way of awareness for regaining dignity for the salesperson. My movement 
to create awareness about sales person and to make sales person sell with flair devotion integrity and honesty a wave of awareness for regaining dignity for the sales person sales persons will not interrupt the sleep of senior citizens they will not barge into the home of a homemaker they will be respectful of the customer's privacy and that great dream all those boards outside housing society which almost rudely almost rudely say that dogs hawkers and sales persons are not allowed those boards i would have wanted them to be smashed 20 years back but then i realized i was in amdavad who's going to do it in amreli or amritsar or amravati or archikare and i realized that even if i get a lot of youngsters to do it how many boards why not get the housing society chairman and secretary to remove the board why not come across as dependable reasonable people full of integrity and care people full of empathy that the board are removed and the housing society officials say please mr sales person please come in because you make our lives so venkatesh i have about 3 and a half thousand youngsters with me on my page is called achal rangaswamy the coach and on my youtube clip by the same name my instagram account by the same name where we only talk of one thing how to become responsible sales people who practice integrity and honesty so at the same time ensure that the customer gets what he wants and there is a win win situation on both sides so awards is a movement that i launched to coincide with the launch of my book discovering the joy of selling in the year 2014 so work is happening the community is becoming bigger and uh, people are on the grow so i sincerely hope that one day we will see those boards coming off the residential colony gates incidentally i also had coined a similar thing which is called as this this in all my uh, previous organization i used to talk keep talking about this which is transparency honesty integrity and sincerity if you have this 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 uh, it really works for anybody in this so you have already added the last two basically uh, integrity sincerity honesty also you have spoken about so transparency also if it is there if i am transparent with you in my dealings it becomes much more best, better for me to get excited absolutely so somewhere along the way uh, like we've been talking about it sales is the least uh, you know anticipated job or the least respected job so most youngsters look down upon this they feel they would like to be in marketing but I always say this if you can't sell you'll never be a great marketing person but i needed another opportunity i needed forums You know, I used to, as head of uh, sales and marketing at Amtrix Hitachi Air Conditioners, and later at Bell Ceramics, I had many opportunities to hire youngsters to come into summer internship with us, and also recruit them for marketing or sales roles. So whenever I would visit preschools, and I visited many of them across the country, many of them, and I still do, uh, I would not really talk so much about that internship assignment for the job. as much as telling the kids what is important from their perspective when it comes to choice of careers and so somewhere along the way and then through my talks by a particular title and also my book by the same title beyond the uncharted landscape i guess i got them to learn to understand their true worth understand what really moves them understand where their strengths are most youngsters unfortunately what happens is identify their strengths but focus too much on their weaknesses whereas i guess a more sane and effective thing would be to identify your weaknesses but focus on your strengths and if you do that you're going to make a career of your choice you're not going to blame the country the government your parents or the pandemic for what went wrong you're going to be doing what you always wanted to do so in a way you're not going to get up in the morning and say i've got to go and work you're only going to say 
let me fulfill chapter 1 or chapter 3 or chapter 7 of my fulfilling career and later as an offshoot of that venkatesh i went and wrote discovering the joy of selling because i wanted to teach youngsters how to fall in love with sales because if you love what you do and if you do what you love then well, actually it's like life is a long vacation and uh, you make enough time for yourself apart from money and friends you make a lot of time for yourself to do things that you always wanted to do like ride a bike play music write uh, travel explore the world but at the same time keep an eye on the watch and even teach people how to manage time how to build extra time every day for instance one of the thoughts i've shared with youngsters pretty often you may remember our discussion uh, last summer where we looked at god has given us 168 hours a week i'll give you 180 hours extra in a year what will you do with those 180 hours that you get extra and then people turn and say my god i could never imagine the kind of things i could do if i had that kind of time and i tell people you will have that all it requires just a little bit of discipline planning your day and then working your plan but not be automated because we are all human beings we are not machines and finally when you are of help to people when you make something good for the world when everybody is busy making a living and if you are in a position to make a life i guess we go back to that very interesting thought that we are not human beings leading a spiritual existence we are spiritual beings leading a human existence when you can come handy to the other person and make him live his life to the satisfaction of inspiring people and keeping them stay inspired i guess is what is likely to drive us people giving back to society paying it forward whatever you may want to call it. so when you begin your career at the lowest rung of the corporate ladder but you reach a stage when you say i have learned enough i think it's time for me to now share but then you learn as to how you can share better and so i guess i am in that process now the wip part now is i'm learning how i can be of better use to society in general and sales persons in particular Yes, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, I have been a beneficiary of uh, your time management skills. I have learned a lot while even working in my first organization, uh, where I learned the value of basically time management. And today, I talk to students and entrepreneurs about the value of time management because of you. Uh, so, you have written a book along with uh, for Ahmedabad Management Association. The time is money. Uh, apart from that, uh, today incidentally is the ninth anniversary of your book, which was co-authored by Mr. M. S. Rinivas and Beyond the Uncharted Landscapes. You also have written a book on the discovering the joy of selling. Uh, about two years later, your son and wife was also written a book called as Forty Six Plus Fourteen Is Equal to Zero Six. So, uh, how much these books have helped you to uh, basically share your experiences with youngsters? and any message that you want to give along with it. Well, as far as my books are concerned, I guess each of the books is aimed at telling people that you don't need to live an automated life or live mechanically. Time is money as a very simple little booklet. I won't even call it a book. It's a very thin, small thing written in a very uh, brief, crisp manner because time is money. I don't want people spending their time reading the book. i want them to implement that and get the best out of it so you actually get a lot of time and practice what is called stress free happiness beyond the uncharted landscape is a very simple you know kind of a book which offers solace comfort peace to students saying you can build a career of your choice and feel fulfilled discovering the joy of selling is a book right out of my life some people call it a semi autobiographical fiction where there is a guy who has no clue as to what he wants to do in life but then discovers joy he doesn't discover joy when he sells pinkatech he doesn't discover joy because he gets orders he discovers joy when a customer puts his arm around his shoulder and says thank you made my day you made my company succeed you made my customers smile at me 
So it's about, again, staying forward. Uh, as far as uh, the books, uh, actually there are two that my wife and son have written together. The first one, which they wrote when Ravi Kiran was actually a student at the National Institute of Design, NID, Ahmedabad, was the story of a young boy who stutters and stumbles uh, in his life, in his academic life, because schools don't consider him good enough to admit. But then over a, as a slow learner, but over a period of time, he discovers his calling and then goes on to become a very happy practitioner of a particular profession. Today, Ravi Kiran is a writer, a photographer. This morning, he just finished, just before I began talking to him. Uh, he was taking a class for students of journalism at a very prominent communication school, media communication school. He not only teaches, he practices photography, various kinds. Along with his mother, who he considers his best friend, he wrote 46 plus 14 is equal to a Z, is equal to 06, a story of a genius, which is the story of this boy who stumbles through life and finally discovers his colleague. He wrote this book with his mother on a visit to Oroville, where we now live in Oroville and Pondicherry. This book was based out of these places. And it was actually the first piece of photographic fiction to be written by a mother and son. So both these books have gone into the Limca Book of Records for being the first effort by a mom-son duo. The first one being the first piece of fiction by a mom and son. The second being the first piece of photographic fiction by a mom and son. The second book is called Camera and Conversations. And it carries some brilliant stories where his imagination has come to work. So the pictures are real, the people are real, but he's built some very interesting stories. You don't necessarily have to do something just because your neighbor or your best friend at college does it. Do what your heart says, do what makes you happy. Because then, the happiness is not at all a destination. It is your constant companion on the way to a fulfilled life. As a family, yes, we are very much into writing. Our styles are different. Our genres are different. But yes, every day, constructively, sometime goes into the making of a publication or a book or maybe a movie. Thank you, sir. Uh, you, your inspiration, your words will definitely make people look into sales as a uh, first career rather than as a last career. And I hope uh, through your entire experience, you can coach more students, you can go to various institutes, you can talk to institutes about how sales is a noble profession. And I hope that tomorrow we all make together a world a much more happy place to be. Thank you very, very much, sir. Once again, uh, it was really insightful meanings that Thank you were you sharing. Thank you very for the... Thanks for the opportunity to talk and it was enjoyable chatting with you as usual. The only thing was this time I'm aware that you probably are recording it earlier. I don't know, <laughs> but I've always enjoyed it. I've always enjoyed talking to you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I wish sir. you a very, 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 very